Hi, I'm Sean Reagan. I'm a technical editor here at Make Magazine, and today I'm introducing a weekend project that combines remote control and wireless video technology to create a remotely operated vehicle you can use in your own living room. Back in 2006, Make contributing writer Tom Zimmerman developed the first version of the Mini Mars Rover as a hands-on activity to help teach students about the Mars Rover program. Basically, he mounted an X10 wireless security camera on a remote-controlled car, fixed some magnets to the front bumper, and challenged his students to drive the vehicle around using only the onboard camera and pick up tin cans. Wireless video technology has come a long way since then, so I decided to bring Tom's project up to date by using a wireless surveillance system, an inexpensive RC car, and by installing two cameras instead of one. This opens up lots of interesting possibilities, including stereoscopic 3D. Here's Tyler to walk you through the build. Full instructions, build notes, and photos are available on the project page. For this build, you'll need these parts. And these tools. First, we'll need to remove the truck body shell from the chassis by removing three screws. Two in the truck bed, and one from below, between the front wheels. Next, open the electronics compartment by removing the four screws and lifting the plastic cover gently up and off. The antenna, which is threaded through a hole in the cover, will slip out the bottom as you do this. To install the chassis standoffs, position the video camera mounting base on the car's electronics component cover. Using the base as a template, drill three matching holes. Then attach three 10 millimeter standoffs on the top of the component cover using the screws that come with these standoffs. Route the antenna back through the port in the component cover, then reattach the cover to the car's chassis using the original screws. To prepare the chassis, thread the antenna through the plastic guide tube bundled with the car. Slot the tube into the antenna port to keep the antenna aerial upright. We added black heat shrink tubing to our antenna to make it look nicer. Next, install batteries into the car and the controller. Though they're more expensive, we're using nickel metal hydride rechargeables because they have greater capacity than alkaline cells and they cut down on batteries headed to the landfill. Turn on the car, grab the controller, and try it out. Note the controller uses no power when it isn't transmitting, so it has no on-off switch. Before we build and mount the dual camera platform, we'll mount and test one camera. Secure the camera mounting base to the three standoffs on the car's chassis using the standoffs bundled screws. These are nice because they have a built-in lock washer to keep things from loosening up due to vibration. Then mount the camera to the base as specified in the camera's directions. Turn on the camera and turn on the base unit. If the camera and base unit are charged, you should see the video feed right away. If you don't see the video straight away, plug the camera and or the base unit into the mains power using their bundled adapters and try again. If you still can't see the video feed, follow the manual directions for pairing the camera and the receiver. Once you see the video, demount the camera and remove the mounting base. To mount both cameras, we need to widen the chassis a bit. We'll use a simple black plastic project enclosure, which will allow us to mount everything neatly and provides a handy payload space for other equipment. Use the mounting base plate as a template, as before, to drill a triangle of holes in the center of the enclosure lid. Mount the lid to the chassis hard points, using the screws bundled with the standoffs. Now, arrange the two camera bases as far apart as you can on the top of the enclosure box and use them as templates to drill six pilot holes in the plastic. Set the mounts aside and drill these holes to the proper size. To install the dual camera platform, fit a rubber grommet into each of the six holes on the top of the project box. These will reduce strain on the mounting platform when the ROV is bouncing around in motion and preventing the mounting nuts and washers from vibrating loose. Align the camera mounting bases over the grommet protected holes and pass a machine screw through each. Secure each screw inside the box with a flat washer and a hex nut and tighten down securely. Don't be afraid to crank down on the grommets a bit, that's why they are there. Fit the project box top with the mounted camera bases over its lid which is secured down to the car's chassis. Use the screws bundled with the project box and tighten them down with a Phillips head screwdriver. Install the cameras on their mounting bases, power them up, and pair them with the receiver per their instruction manuals. Now, it's time to play. There are several interesting ways to use a pair of cameras, and which you choose will affect both how the cameras are aligned on the car frame and which camera is assigned to which radio channel. For wide-angle binocular vision, angle both right and left cameras out to each side by about 30 degrees. The left camera should be assigned channel 1 and the right camera channel 2. 
View them side by side by setting the receiver to quad mode. Together, the two cameras provide a much more natural 120 degree field of view. For backup camera view, point the left side camera forward and the right side camera to the rear. Alternate between them when you need to, like when reversing the car by cycling between the two channels on the receiver. For stereoscopic 3D view, set both cameras facing forward at the same angle and elevation. If you know how to view stereograms, you can set the receiver to quad mode and view the video feeds as either parallel or cross-eyed stereo view for full 3D roving experience. Let us know if you try this project and make any mods or improvements along the way. And as always, have fun.